Robert Val O Great Mountain. Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plague, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, Grace unto it. Shouts of Grace Center brings you pure and undiluted word of God from the impeccable throne of grace. Be blessed as you listen. Our hearts are filled with thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you. Shada Balata, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. You are exalted in our lives. You are exalted in our situation. You are exalted in shouts of grace center. You are exalted above every other thing, above every other name. Let every other name fade away. Only you are God. Only you are King. And we adore you. Be thou exalted, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have worshipped. Amen. You can be wonderfully seated. Thank you, choir. I want to appreciate our daddy in the house for this privilege. And our mommy, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. It's always a privilege to stand on the shoulders of men that has gone ahead. Thank you, sir, for the privilege. This morning we'll be looking at the presence of God. The presence of God. We'll start from the book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 15 and 16. The presence of God. What is the presence of God? How important is the presence of God? Is this something we should pursue after? Is this something that, you know, is not for everybody? Is this something that is meant for um, um, the pastors like we, we, we know them? Or the prophets or the or people that in the men of God? Or is this something that is meant for every single believer? Exodus chapter 33 verse 15. Then he said to him, this was Moses talking. If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then, verse 16, will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight except to go with us? So shall we be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth? So here, Moses began to reveal to us that there is something important about the presence of God. He says, if your presence does not go with us, I am not going anywhere further. If your presence does not go with me as I go to school, I am not going anywhere. If your presence does not go with me in my business, I am not going anywhere. I am not starting the business. If your presence is not made manifest in my family, I am not going to marry. If your presence does not go with me in this journey whatsoever your journey may be that was what Moses was saying he was saying that I cannot afford to go to take an inch without your presence he was letting us know how important God's presence is and I believe that one of the reasons he he was able to make that statement was because he understood for example that when the Red Sea parted it was not because he raised up the rod that was the the that was the the means but what parted the red sea was the presence so he understood that if god's presence does not go with us we may go with willpower we may go with the strength of our arms we may go with the strength of flesh but we will not go anywhere so imagine that god's presence was not with them when they were faced with that red sea they would have been destroyed it therefore means that if you lack the presence of God, it can lead to your death, literally. So you are about to leave your house and the presence of God is not with you and you are going. God wants to tell you. In fact, God is saying, don't follow this road. Follow this road. But you are not conscious of his voice. You are not conscious of his presence. And you are not hearing. You therefore follow the road that is not meant for you. And you go and you meet riot somewhere. And you are shot. 
so the presence of god lack of the presence of god can cost you your life literally so moses said if your presence does not go with us we are not going anywhere he said how we how what will be the distinguishing factor between us your children and the other people it means that the evidence that god is with you is god's presence so if god's presence is not with you it's an it's evidence that god is not with you because moses was telling god the the the, the, the distinguishing factor between i and the unbelievers between i and the egyptians is your presence so the evidence that god is with you is not that you are able to sing very well it's not that you are able to move in power it's not that you are um that you are alive because sometimes the devil deceives us he says um um if if god is not with you would have been dead by now so the evidence or maybe you can sing very well and you sing and it's as though things are happening moses was saying that the evidence is not that i speak in tongues it's not that i can speak in tongues is that your presence is with me that is what distinguishes us from the unbelievers so what distinguishes you from your colleagues at work that are not brethren you walk into the office and it's the same ambience that you bring that they bring it's the same atmosphere you bring that they bring so what is the distinguishing factor moses was saying if your presence is not with us we are the same with the other people so the true measure of how much god is with you is the amount of presence his presence that he has invested on your life is the amount of his presence that you can host not host when you are with the mic but in your everyday affair so what is this presence of god what, what, what was moses talking about because we know that god is everywhere so what was moses talking about he says if your presence does not go with us but god is omnipresent he's everywhere psalm chapter 138 from verse 7 the psalmist began to tell us that there is no place i can run to that your presence will not find me there if i go to the highest of the heavens you are there the depth of the earth you are there so god is everywhere but there was a there is a particular presence that moses was talking about and by the way is because we are not conscious of the fact that god is everywhere that we 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 allow sin that we um because sin they say tribes in secrecy so you want to fornicate you are looking for a dark corner because you are not conscious of the fact that god is there so you are hiding from men let oh nobody saw me when i told that lie nobody saw me when i i i i kissed that person that is not my wife nobody saw me when i had sex with that person that is not my husband but god is everywhere and the apostles will tell us who shall we fear should we fear men or should we fear god so in your life if you are conscious of the fact that god is everywhere there is no place you can run to to hide from god it will help you to curtail the desires of the flesh god is everywhere he sees everything anywhere you are so god is everywhere but moses knew what he was talking about because there's what we call the manifest presence god is everywhere but it's not made manifest everywhere second chronicles chapter 5 from verse 13 to 14. second chronicles chapter 5 from verse 13 to 14. says it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers remember that they were in the tabernacle they were making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the lord and when they lifted up their voices with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the lord saying for he is good for his mercy endureth forever then the house was filled with the cloud even the glory of the lord 
even the house of the Lord so that the priest and could not stand for the reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God so these men were in the house of God but when when they began the manifest presence was not there but when they began to journey a time came he said that the presence because the glory of the Lord is the presence of God the presence of God is the glory of God the presence of the Lord filled the house so the the the, the omnipresent God be, began to be made manifest in that in that in that place so there is a difference between God being everywhere and God being made manifest so God is everywhere even unbelievers know that but what distinguishes us is the manifest presence that we carry so what are the benefits of the presence number one is death Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 was talking about a man Enoch he says and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him and Enoch walked with God and he was not he ceased to exist so one of the things that happen when you begin to commune with the presence is that you begin to die could it be that the reason you are still struggling with that sin with that desire of the flesh is that you are not having the presence you are not communing with the presence could it be that the reason lies is still holding sway in your life is that you are not walking with god he said an enoch walked with god and he was not he was taken so to us what that can mean is that you know you know we are taking our flesh our desires are taken away we die to the things of the flesh we die to the things of the world could it be that the reason you are still struggling with masturbation with pornography is that you are not walking with god you are you are not carrying the manifest presence So the first evidence or one of the evidences that happens that comes with the presence is that you begin to die to self genesis number two graces are revealed genesis chapter 6 verse 8 to 9 he said and noah found grace in the eyes of the lord verse 9 he did not just find that grace because god chose to give him the grace say these are the generations of noah noah was a just man and prophet in generation and noah walked with god so when you begin to walk with god he begins to release his graces upon you so the grace that your business needs to move forward he releases it at a point in your walk with god he releases the grace for good health for health to you and you walk in that grace he releases the the, the, the grace of excellence in your academics in your business and you walk in it so they they they, they our walk with god best graces in our lives and those graces keep us ahead the scripture talking about daniel he said for he had an excellent spirit he was by virtue of his walk with god same morning three times a day he was found praying psalm chapter 114 from verse 1 that's number three plenty things happen mountains melt at the present one four from verse i say when israel went out from, from egypt the house of jacob from the people of strange language Je judah was a sanctuary and, and israel his dominion the sea saw it and fled what did they see we don't know yet jordan was driven back we don't know what they saw verse 4 the mountains keep like rams and the little hills like like lambs what did they see i we don't know what led the psalmist began to inquire oh thou see that thou fledest thou jordan that thou was driven back ye mountains that ye skip like rams and ye little his like lambs he said tremble thou earth at the presence of the lord so we begin to see that all these things were happening because of the presence of the Lord. The sea saw the presence and fled. Jordan saw the presence and was driven back. Mountains we see it and melt. Hills we see it and crumble. So the challenges in your life, they respond to the presence that you carry. Doors open at the account of the, of the person standing before it. Doors open by the presence that you, you bring to it. So 
there are doors in your life there are mountains in your life that they will not shift until you 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 play host to the presence of god to the manifest presence of god could it be that the things you are passing through in your life is because you've not presented the presence to it could it be that the struggles you are going through could it be that it's because you've not presented god to it it's about carrying god it's about carrying the presence inhibiting inhibitors of the presence number one sin genesis chapter 3 verse 8 he said and when god came in the cool of the day he was walking he came for a fellowship he said that an adam ran so the glory the presence of god they does not coexist with sin is either sin or the glory is either sin or the presence of god so if you are looking at hosting the presence you must run from sin it's either you are running from god or you are running from sin either of the two so if you want to play host to god if you want to carry this presence you must deal with sin and it's not as though sin is more powerful than the presence that when the presence and sin meets presence goes sin stays no the presence is more powerful than sin so you can come to god with that sin and because of the presence the sin goes but the judge is you your heart so if you are living in habitual sin you cannot hide the presence but if you fall and you run to god the presence will take care of the sin so what we are saying is not that ah i have sin so let me just cook my run away and we are saying that your heart matters what is your disposition to that sin you are struggling with do you want god to take it away or are you comfortable in it now when we talk about sin what usually comes to our heart is the sin the main sin fornication lying and all that but bitterness bitterness and the presence does not stay unforgiving spirit and the presence does not stay have you noticed if you're a person of the presence you will notice that when you are not at peace with someone you find it difficult to commune with god they don't stay together so we begin to check our lives we begin to x-ray our lives said examine yourself we begin to check our lives to make sure that we are not living in bitterness he said oh how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in harmony it is like what the dew falling upon man's hemon it's like oil from the head so the anointing comes with unity comes in the places where there are no strife so they flow from from the head to the beds to the garments the flow that flow is is enhanced by unity by lack of bitterness number two inhibitor of the presence is guilt sometimes what the devil used to pin us down is guilt so you have done something in the past and he's holding it and you keep on dwelling in that guilt in the place of that guilt you cannot house the presence but we begin to understand in hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 that when god forgives he forgets so have you confessed that sin have you come with a broken and a contrite heart god has forgiven and he has forgotten so when the devil comes to you to hold you down with the guilt of the past sins that you've repented of you know what to do so that you can play host to the presence because if you give in to guilt you cannot carry the presence how do we cultivate the presence one key word is fellowship second corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. he said now may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the spirit abide with us so if you want to 
host God's presence. You must be a person that communes with God, that fellowships with God in the place of worship, in the place of prayer, in the place of study of the scripture. You must fellowship. Can you just close your eyes this morning and ask God to help you? To help you to host the presence. If there is a sin in your life, ask Him to forgive. Ask Him for mercy. And ask Him to breathe upon you so that you come alive on the inside. You come alive on the inside. His breath is here right now. Ask Him to breathe upon you. If you are here this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus, I would like to present us an opportunity to do so. It is the greatest decision you will ever take in your life. If you are making that decision this morning, say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I declare you died for my sin. You rose up on the third day. From today, I'm a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. In Jesus' name. Congratulations if you prayed that prayer. Welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to God's kingdom. Please kindly leave a comment or send us a message on any of our social media handles so that we can send you the relevant materials. God bless you. This message is brought to you by Dunamis and Sophia No and part by the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, Shouts of Grace Center, and Kisses and Hugs Club, an online ministry to singles and married couples. Connect with us on Instagram at Pastor Dunamis, at Pastor Sophia Bola, at Shouts of Grace Center, at KC underscore global, on Facebook at KC Global, on YouTube at Dunamis Tunde Noo on MixLR at KHC Global. Visit our website www.kissesandhooks.com via our mail at kscpartners at gmail.com God bless you.